I don't. In this video, we're going to talk about aspects of Bangkok 5. In this video, we're going to have a few different things. We're going to hit a few different topics. Uh, so one's going to be like a general theme, one's going to be an application, and one's going to be something for you as a practitioner and you as a judge to keep a look for. Uh, so let's start off with the, uh, the general theme of this particular form. Bangkok 5 really works on keeping your distance. So this is generally something that we've talked about like in the past, right? So for example, uh, Sang Su 3, it's like, all right, so I'm, I'm here, I'm cutting this way to make sure you're staying back while I can still interact with you. Bangkok 5 is gonna be a little bit different in the sense that I'm really trying to maintain my space, but it's very clear people are trying to get back in. Uh, so, for example, even if you take a look at the way this form starts, it's really all about getting your distance. So, for example, uh, even think about the way this form starts. All the others so far really start with that nice clear and then grab, right? So, really, like, going straight to this one after a general, like, draw and then grab. This one is not doing that. So, this is actually going to be doing a draw that's very similar to what we did in uh, Yeto 4, we're starting with the uh, left foot, left clear. Right, so I'm here, I'm really thinking about getting my space. And we're going to do that a few different times, even in just the beginning of the form. Right, so if I'm here, obviously I see you, so like, all right, like, dude, stop. Right, so I'm here, right, and I'm here. So I, again, I've, made, I've made it clear that I see you, and now because it is Bangkok, I'm going to be my Bangkok guard. But again, think about what happens next. So I just cleared, you're backed off. I haven't checked behind me, so what I'm going to do is come here, clear again, and then we start really getting our distance, right? So we're, like, notice again, I hit all the major corners, right? So I initially started here, kind of, like, check my surroundings, realize things are really starting to close in, quite literally. Uh, so then I'm kind of getting back my center, and, like, all right. So from here, it's also going to bring back that old point about that contact that I like. We kind of, like, roll around and a nice big diagonal clear, big clear, again, knee block clear. For some reason, this is more of a knee block, but it's one-handed, so you're reaching, and then you're trying to get your distance, and then I'm gonna start dispatching this person. So this is also gonna be true for uh, one of the techniques I'm gonna uh, ask for you to be careful about, right? So as you're watching, as you're practicing, uh, it's gonna be the four center cuts, right? So the center cuts going all sorts of different directions. Uh, that's another example of you just getting your distance, but in a very quick, very precise manner. So as opposed to what we did with three, right, where we just did the clover technique, where it's kind of like mowing people down this way, this is very specific. This is using uh, different moves to achieve the same means, right? So we have a cross cut, we have a diagonal into a clear, into a uh, back end sword, into a center. We're really getting our distance, really being aware of what's going on, which is pretty cool in this form. Uh, notice again, all the different spins. We're always like checking over our shoulder. This is a good form just to practice awareness. Uh, so this, <laughs> uh, so with a caveat, like don't hurt yourself. So obviously remember the, the things we talked about at the end, right, so be safe. But this will be a good uh, form for you to do, probably with a safety sword if you're gonna do it first. Um, this is not a safety sword, I'm just saying safety sword. Um, try to do this technique with, or try to do this form with a lot of other people doing the same form, right? So this would be good for you to be like, all right, I'm doing this move, I see you, I see you, I'm gonna keep moving this way. Uh, this is a really nice form to, to work on your awareness. Uh, so that is a major aspect that I would like for you to think about in this form. Another thing I'd like to talk about is gonna be the very specific combination uh, nearing the end of the form. Now, this is a combination that I've seen, and I've had a really long, like, it, it took a while for me to think of a, an application that I liked enough that I'd be willing to, like, teach it as such. Now, just so you guys see what I'm talking about, right? So we're, we're here, right? So we just did our fancy guard. We do a ledge based stab, one hand knee block, up, and then we do this nice jump into going into a couple uh, headshots. Okay. Let's take each move kind of like literally, like, okay, I am stabbing someone. Okay, this is cool, stabbing, that's always fun. And then we come down here for a knee block. All right, what, what happened to this guy? A block. All right, <laughs> that seems like a problem, right? So now I'm here. 
and then I'm gaining distance with a jump cross. I allegedly pray head level, so that might be allegedly trying to hit them in the throat. Cool. And then we go into seven cuts. All right, those are intended to be dispatch moves. Weird. <laughs> There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Uh, now, again, you can interpret the three cuts, right? So the first two being sliding cuts, right? So pushing their sword down to the side, pushing their sword down to the side before you're able to get that center cut. Okay, so now if you take each move literally, things kind of fall apart, right? Uh, I stab you. Cool. Like, that's, we, we stab people. Cool. Yeah. He's like, all right. He's still there. Now I'm blocking someone's knee, or blocking my knee, but going for someone else's knee. But then I bring the blade up, although I just did a knee block, so the sword's probably still down there. All right, jump, <laughs> because why not? Why not jump? Uh, jump cross cut. So this starts with like, all right, so like, well, what happened to this dude? Why are you jumping towards that person who was knee like striking? Knee? Like this all makes weird sense, right? Or it doesn't make any sense because it's too weird. So this is my interpretation. So again, this is something that, again, I developed because I was not happy with the... Actually, I'd never heard a canonical view, so if you've heard a canonical view, uh, let me know. But let's talk about different ways we can use these techniques. Right, so like, all right, so we're here. Um, so the idea for the first one, so I'll just kind of walk you through what's going on, right? Uh, so the first thing is actually not gonna be a thrust so much as catching someone behind Right, so for example, like catching someone behind like the rib, for example, or better yet, behind a knee, although it's a higher uh, motion. Here, catch them behind and really try to push them forward. So notice I'm sliding down. So allegedly, if I do catch someone in the back, allegedly I'm going for the back of the knee, which won't be as protected. Uh, whether or not you're using armor, right? So if you are using armor, more likely it will slide into the knee, uh, so that's not good for you. Uh, but like, okay, so that's... Not as bad, right? So the idea is I'm here, I'm really trying to push you in that direction by either, if you're not wearing armor, trying to slit open your rib, or here, sliding down again the length of the leg to get for the back of the knee and blow that out. Now if I can, sever the hamstrings, cool, like <laughs> gold star, right? Um, but all right, so first of all, that explains why we start high, come down low. I'm really trying to push them forward. I'm really trying to make them collapse. Okay, so I'm down. What are they doing? There might be someone behind them, right? Or they might not be you know, as dispatched as we would like. Again, they got back knee shot, but they're still you know, up and kicking, metaphorically, <laughs> right? Because they don't have one. Uh, but we're here, I'm checking, right? Because this is a nice, quick checking move. But notice this is no longer that knee strike. Right, or it is a knee strike, but we're not reaching out for someone here and then drawing back. I have cut someone's hamstring. I'm here, I'm checking, right? Maybe they're trying to come back up. What I could do is use this, not to gain distance, but to kind of get that nice, uh, keep, I'm going to say keeping the age, but nice synchrony to really use a pop, right? So get a nice uh, short range cut, almost like a, a hachiba, but for a cross cut, right? So we use hachiba, to really have this backward foot or forward foot, forward foot motion to really get that hachiba. This is gonna be similar for uh, knee up, and as you switch knees, that extra knee motion is gonna help counterbalance a nice powerful cross-cutting motion. Cool, so to reiterate, behind someone's rib, draw down, try to get them in the back of the knee, coming up, getting ready, kind of watching them get up maybe. And from here, one, two, really striking probably the back of the neck. And from here, uh, going into the offensive, maybe in the zone behind them, or just trying to like, again, get out of the way. Um, okay, so that this is an application that I like a little bit more. Uh, the story's a little bit more <laughs> animated, right? Um, but it is something that makes a little more sense than stab, knee block, head block, jump cut into this kind of stuff, right? I like this explanation a little bit better. It's a little more... It's a little bit tidier, so we're going to go with that. And the last technique that I would like to talk about is going to be the four center cuts. Now, you might think, like, I've been doing center cuts since white belt. I know how to do a center cut, but you'll be surprised. Just so we know we're on the same page, right? So we just did our cross cut, then we do one, two, three, four, and we start to do our uppercuts, right? 
So again, remembering that this is working on that theme of, again, gaining your distance. This is very snipey, right? As opposed to, again, the general clover motion that we used in uh, three. Okay, so things I would like for you to think about as you go through this technique is gonna be, so one thing is gonna be simply, make sure you have synchrony, right? So I know I talked about that Bangkok has a different synchrony compared to, for example, Sangsu, but these are very Sangsu-ish techniques, right? So right, so we just did our fun little cross cut, and then we're here, it's snap, 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 right? In fact, you really need that back foot to come in to make sure you still have that power when you're in shorter distance. Okay, so one thing is gonna be obviously that synchrony, and also make sure, again, this is for both the judge and for you to be aware as you practice this, make sure you have that crisp footwork, right? So it's not gonna be like, so again, cross cut, I'm gonna, Omit the sword just because I want to make sure you're focusing on, on the footwork and I don't hit anything. So cross cut, and then we're going to have the one, two, three, four, right? Okay, so one thing that might happen is you kind of have like this kind of like this kind of thing, right, which you don't want. So you want to make sure, your, first of all, your belt knot is always facing the direction of dispatching, right? So I'll make sure I'm here and not like kind of like this sideways kind of like motion, right? So make sure you have that, make sure you have the glutes activated so it's really tight here, tight, 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 right? So you're making sure you're really working on that individual sniping motions. So make sure you finish the combination first before you keep going on, right? So make sure you have one, two, three, four, as opposed to like one, two, three, four, right? Which is going to be different than speed, right? So you still want speed, you still want that crispness we also want to make sure you're not like omitting any part of that cut. Uh, so as a judge and as a person practicing, uh, really think about how you can make this really clean, make this something that you want to display to someone, uh, because this should be a nice, really quick technique. Uh, so make sure you practice that. Hard to believe we only have two more forms left, right? We have Bangkok six and seven, so we've come to the end. So we have a few more, right? So we have a few more for you, uh, for you to get into, to interpret and really try to understand uh, but with this one, right, so as with all the others, again, can we retcon this? Absolutely, right, so like the ideas that we have, like, all right, so can I use these techniques to really be aware of where I am in the mobile form, right? So obviously think about this as you go through Sangsu 3. Even think about like Sangsu 1 and 2, right? So 1, I am aware of you, so I'm just using my, again, my menske to use a Japanese term to really think about where I'm cutting. And then this crisp term, uh, now taking ideas from our third aspect, right, so really thinking about that crispness of the motion, right? So because at this point, we're all very high ranking black belts. We should be able to have that really nice, beautiful crispness from Bangkok uh, and integrate it very nicely into our Sangsu. Uh, well, Sangsu and Yedo. Um, so make sure you take these ideas, retcon them best you can. Also have some fun. Again, like we're higher ranking black belts now. We're allowed to kind of like experiment, uh, take something from a new idea and like really apply it, see if it works. So have some fun with that. So I guess with that, so make sure you keep training, stay safe, and stay humble. Hi, Dong.